Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the ultimate guide to achieve a blurred and smooth complexion. So in my previous video, I showed you my favorite products to get that blurred effect using my favorite products that really give you that soft focus filtered effect to the skin. And today I thought I would show you more of my favorite tips to help get that really smart, smooth blurred effect on the skin because I think a lot of, well, it does matter what products you are using, a lot of it comes down to the techniques you are using to apply your products as well that will help you achieve that really filtered appearance to your skin as well. So if you want to see how I get the ultimate blurred and smooth skin, just keep watching. So if you saw my previous video, I went over the best products to create that really blurred soft focus effect. And I thought I would show you these products in actions. Kind of what I went over in my video, I'm not a huge fan of like Instagram social media filters because I just think they're really unrealistic and they kind of can mess with your mental health if you are using them all the time. But I like makeup products that give you that same effect, but it actually still looks like you because you are just applying makeup to your skin. But it just gives you that really sm smooth and blurred effect, but it's not altering your appearance like some Instagram filters do. Um, I just am a huge fan of blurring and smoothing products because I just think it makes your complexion look so beautiful in person. And I just like everything to look really smooth and soft focus and I just, I just adore that look. So I thought I'd go over all of the products. So I've already gone in with my sunscreen for the day and I use the Chantecaille Ultra Sun Protection Sunscreen. This is a broad spectrum SPF 45 primer. I really like this for underneath makeup because it's very cosmetically elegant. It is very smoothing on the skin. It reduces the appearance of texture on the skin. This works really well for my dry skin as well. So I really recommend this because I think without going onto the skin with makeup, it's already giving me that really nice, smooth look to my skin. So I have already started with this product. I am going to go in with my Sisley Blur Expert Powder. Now this powder is the perfect primer. I haven't used this on camera in a while, so I thought I would use it today. This is a really great primer product. Even though it's a powder, you apply it underneath makeup, and it does add this really, really nice filtered effect. It makes the pores completely disappear when you apply this product onto your skin. And this product does add, I want to say like a little tiny bit of coverage. Um, so you don't need to apply as much foundation over top of this product, which is another reason why it works so well underneath makeup. Just when you apply your foundation over top of this, it is amazing how it just totally reduces the appearance of texture on the skin. So what I like to do is I like to pick it up on a brush, and so you can just see I'm stamping it in, I'm not swirling it around in this product, and then what I do is I just stamp it onto the center of my skin right here. So I'm just stamping it where I have the most pores, which is right in the center of my face. If you're someone with oily skin, I only really have pores in this area, but if you're someone who gets pores in like the center of your forehead or your nose or your chin, you can pounce it there. So again, I'm not buffing this powder into my skin. I am pressing it into the skin like this so that the powder really gets pressed into um, any texture or any pores that you have on the skin. So I love that product. And then I am going to move on to concealer. And the concealer, again, there's not really a concealer that is completely pore blurring, I want to say, but the one that I have found that has the most soft focus effect is the Chanel. This is the Supermage Le Corrector U, the Radiance Generating Concealing Eye Care. I have the shade 020, which is a little bit too light for me, but that is fine, I can make it work. So I like to apply a little bit of that concealer with this Clay de Peau concealer brush, and I'll just bring it on the under eyes. And when I want, I guess that, really this goes for any makeup look, but I don't like to apply it directly underneath my eye because that is where you have the most fine lines. So if you apply a lot of product there, you are just going to emphasize those fine lines. So I like to bring it just where I'm dark, basically right to there. And then with that excess product on the brush, I like to bring it onto this outer corner because I am a little dark right here. And then I also like to apply it in this kind of shape, this uplifted effect, because it will add that lifted appearance to my face so that my face looks more uplifted and elevated and things aren't like sinking down, which kind of can age the 
face a little bit. From there, I just take my damp beauty blender sponge and blend everything in. I already feel like that concealer over top of that Sisley primer makes everything just look so much more blurred and smooth. I absolutely love that. The best foundation for that blurred look to me is the Dior Capture Total Super Potent Serum Foundation. If you want to layer coverage, I really recommend that Sisley foundation that I mentioned, the Sisley Phyto Taunt Nude, I believe it is. Very light coverage foundation, but it is very blurring if you just want that no makeup makeup kind of look where it just gives you a hint of coverage, but it's very, very sheer. Makes your skin look like skin, but you get that really blurred effect. But this Dior Capture Total, it is so smoothing and so blurring on the skin. So I like to start off by just applying a pump to the palm of my hand. I always kind of mix it on the palm of my hand. Again, not the back of your hand because the back of your hand has pores, which will absorb that product quicker. And for me, I like the effect that I get when I use a damp beauty blender. I start off with just a bit of that product and I'll pick everything up. And I like to start kind of on the outskirts of my skin just because I have a little bit more pigmentation there. And I want, for that blurred look, I want the least amount of product to be first on my nose. You always want to apply foundation onto your nose last. And then I want the, a minimal amount of product on the center of my skin because I've already blurred my skin using first that SPF product. If you went in with a blurring primer like this Paula's Choice, you'll already have blurred that area with a primer as well. And that Sisley primer that I use, that has also blurred the area. So therefore, because this part of my skin is already blurred, it already has that soft focus effect, it already has reduced the appearance of texture on my skin, I don't want to go in with foundation first into that area because when you apply product, especially product that has a little bit of coverage on the skin, it's already just going to add another layer of texture onto your skin. So to get that blurred look, you want to apply the least amount of product onto your skin as you can get away with. Now, if you're someone that is um, maybe has acne in this area or you have a lot of redness, again, I would recommend, even though it's really, really tempting to start applying your foundation in that area, Start by using those blurring primers in that area first, and then you won't have to go in with as much foundation. Therefore, your foundation is going to look more natural on the skin, and it is actually going to have that really blurred, soft focus effect. It is going to have that look, but it will look more natural on the skin. So with that excess product, then I will go over this area here, because it's going to just tone down the redness in my skin ever so slightly but I still want a little bit of pink to show through because I am going to add blush to my cheeks as well. I just think we have that temptation to just completely cancel out any of that redness, and I don't necessarily think you need to completely cover it up, and you just get a better blurred effect that will last longer when you go in with that minimal amount of product there. And by pressing that product into the skin, again, I'm not gonna disrupt any of the primers that I've applied underneath. Sometimes with a brush, you can actually um, get some texture on the skin. It will like emphasize dryness on the skin or things like that. So I just like this effect. And this foundation again is just excellent. You can hear me talk about it more in that in-depth video, but this really is blurring on the skin. It is so soft focus. It really does reduce the appearance of texture on the skin whenever I apply it. I swear it just looks like I have applied a filter. Everything just looks so smooth on my skin, but it's also a foundation that looks very natural on the skin, so it doesn't look heavy, it doesn't look cakey. It's about a light to medium coverage. It is buildable to medium, but it looks very natural on the skin, and you still can see some pigmentation showing through. So if you like a full coverage foundation, you would probably want to use something different, but this is just my favorite blurring foundation. So powder is extremely important when we were talking about a blurred look. I think that powder has the most impact. A powder can make or break your makeup look completely. And especially on the under eye area, you need to make you need to use a very finely milled powder that's very delicate, that doesn't add a lot of texture to the under eye areas. And I think that there is a very precise way to apply powder to the under eye area because again, powder can make your skin look worse, but it could also make your skin look better if you apply it correctly and if you use the right kind of powdered product. My favorite for that really blurred look on the under eye region that will not emphasize dryness, that will not sit into any lines. Um, that won't make your under eyes look worse essentially is this rhodial glass powder. This is a loose setting powder and you can use this all over the face. I just prefer different powders for different areas of my face.
kind of like I prefer different concealers for different areas of my face. So loose powder works best for me on the under eye region. This one is extremely finely milled. It is like translucent, but it also has a kind of skin tone to it. So this will work if you have a different complexion color, not just um, pale skin, because a lot of translucent powders are white. Therefore, if you have a deeper complexion, you can't really get use out of them. So this will work for any complexion. And I will show you how I use this. So there's two ways that I would suggest using this. Either going in with your damp beauty blender sponge, um, just using, you want to make sure that all the excess water is squeezed out. So it's basically an almost dry sponge. It's just slightly damp. Or go in with one of these beauty blender puffs, which are actually really fantastic for pressing powder into the skin. Again, because we want that really smooth blurred look. So by pressing product into the skin, that is how you're going to get the smoothest look to your skin. So you can go in with this product. I'll show, I guess, one on one eye and the other method on the other eye. Um, so I want to tap out all the creases on my under eye region before I set that powder down. And I'm gonna make like a crazy face like this because I wanna make sure all the lines on my under eye area are completely flat because I don't want to set any of the, like if I'm talking like this, a little bit of concealer can kind of settle into those fine lines on my under eye region. So by going like this, I'm gonna make sure there's no lines left. So again, I'm gonna cut out those lines make that face. I'm going to get a little bit of powder on my little puff. So again, this is the Beauty Blender puff, but I'm tapping off all that excess so that all that powder is just getting really pressed into this sponge. So I barely have powder on this sponge, really. I'm going to make that face and then I press it onto the other under eye region to set that concealer. And again, I'm pressing it into the skin. I find this works better than a brush because with a brush, you're not really getting all that powder pressed right into the skin. It kind of just sits on top of the skin. But this, you're actually pressing it literally into your skin. So I find it works better. Um, the damp sponge method works a little bit better on my under eye region than this puff does just because I have such dry skin. So the little bit of moisture left in the sponge works a little bit better, but you can see I do the exact same method where I'm taking all that excess powder off so that the powder is really pressed into the sponge, but just a little bit of product is in the sponge. And then I set it by pressing it onto the under eye area. Again, I don't take it up all the way, um, like right outside my lash line because then it will just sit on those little fine lines, but I'm just pressing it right kind of in this area here. And then you can set the outer corner too. But again, there's such a minimal amount of product that is on this puff and this sponge that it doesn't look powdery on the under eye region. It still looks very natural on the under eyes. Honestly, both of those look the same. So whatever method you prefer, if you're someone that just doesn't like beauty blenders, then pick up this beauty blender puff. So it's by the same brand. This is just a puff version. Works really, really well. And this rhodial glass powder, amazing for getting that really smooth blurred look on your under eyes. The bronzer that I highly recommend, either if you are into cream bronzers, the Chantepay Anti-Aging Face Tint. Again, go back to my previous video where I go into depth about that product and how much I love it. But because I already set my under eyes and I just love this bronzer, I'm going to show you this Valentino bronzer. So this is the um, Go Clutch On The Move Bronzer. This is the refill in the shade Zero. So I just believe it's called Universal Bronzer and the shade again is zero. So to me that Valentino bronzer is almost identical to this Chanel Le Beige Oversized Healthy Glow Sun Kiss Powder in the shade medium specifically. They are so similar on the skin. Um, so again, I just like to apply a little bit of product, always tapping the excess on my hand. So they're really identical. I would say the Chanel has a little bit more of a glow to it. It has like a golden sheen that is sitting throughout the bronzer. So I like the Valentino one even more because sometimes with bronzers with a bit more machine, you have to be a little more careful with them. But this Valentino bronzer, while it does have an ever so soft glow, it's not a completely matte bronzer. The glow is so flattering and the glow does add this really beautiful soft focus effect to the skin. It does not look shimmery. You can't detect any shimmer particles on the skin. This is the most blurring powder bronzer that I have. Now I know it has been out of stock in the US for quite a while. I'm really hoping it comes back into stock soon because 
for me, this is just kind of the only bronzer that I feel like I need in my collection. That's not true. I have a lot of other bronzers that I really like. I feel like if I was mentioning a second place bronzer to this, um, and the Chanel one would be the Chantecaille Sirena bronzer. Um, it's called the Real Bronze. It has that gel to powder texture. Um, this is not, I don't want to say it's similar because the Chantecaille is a big gelée where this is a powder product, but this is very creamy. This has the effect of a cream bronzer on the skin because of how finely milled it is and how creamy this formula is. It really melts into the skin. Which, and because it has that really seamless effect melted in quality onto the skin, I feel like that makes it look really smoothing on the skin as well because it just looks so creamy and skin-like on the skin. Um, so it really helps with that smoothing appearance and that soft focus effect. Just my favorite bronzer of all time, pretty much. For highlight, this is the Chantecaille Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. I really love this for highlighter because it is not going to emphasize the texture on the skin at all. It is basically a powder that has a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's not a typical highlighter. You're not even going to be able to detect that on my skin. But it's not a typical highlighter product where there are like detectable shimmer particles. Um, a lot of highlighters, when they give you that glow, you can see a little bit of that sheen. It can give you that wet glow effect. This isn't any sort of wet glow highlighter. This is almost just a brightening powder, but it also blurs your skin, which is so unique for a powder with a glow to it because most powders with a glow, they actually emphasize texture, but this one actually smooths out the skin. So you can be more generous when you apply it. Usually when I apply highlighter, I am so sparse with my application. But with this, I can go in with a heavier hand and I'll just always get that really blurred appearance on my skin. It is so beautiful. One of the best powders on the market. So if you're looking for a highlighter that is not going to emphasize texture, that's going to be very flattering on mature skin. If you saw my best makeup for mature skin that I did with my mom, this is her favorite highlighter and she is 64 and she loves this on her skin. So I think that is saying something. You can even bring a little bit of this powder like down the nose, apply it above the brow. You can be more generous with this powder because it is a powder that adds glow but is also blurring. Just very unique, a game changer in my collection and something that I highly recommend. This is also a multi-purpose product for me so I'm going to show you how I use it later on in my makeup application as well. And for blush, the most blurring blush that I had, I mentioned the Valentino blush, which is really great if you're someone that has super dry skin and maybe more mature skin as well because it gives you a bit of a glow. The Gucci blush is great if you have oilier skin. Again, gives that blurred effect. But the one that I found the most blurring is this Clay de Peau. This is the Blush Powder Duo in the shade number 105. I mean, it honestly, the... The slight differences in the blurring capabilities between those blushes were so, so subtle, but the one that works best for me and gives me that most blurred effect was the Clay de Peau, just by like a hair though. So I'm just going to show you how I use this. I've been using this Patrick Ta blush brush, which I actually really like. It gives me a more like blushy look because this is quite big for my face because I have a very small face. So what I like to do is I'll dip into this deeper kind of rosewood shade twice, and then I'll just dip into this brighter peach shade just twice. And again, always tapping off the excess. And when I want my blush to have that blurred look, I'm not going to be buffing it into the skin. I'm going to press it into the skin. So again, you'll notice with all these application tips I'm giving to you, we are pressing product into the skin because when you buff product into the skin, it can disrupt makeup underneath or it can just disrupt your skin underneath and it can make dry patches start to get emphasized. It can just actually add texture to the skin. So I'm being very gentle with how I am applying all these products. I am pressing all the products into my skin with a very light touch. And I'm always being very delicate with how much product I'm applying because you can always go in with more product, but it's harder to take away product. And again, the more product, the more layers that you add to the skin, especially if you're applying heavy layers, the worse your texture is going to look and the more it's going to look like makeup, which therefore, again, won't look as smooth on the skin. It will just look like makeup sitting on top of the skin. So we really wanna use those thin layers of product to ensure that we're getting the most blurred look possible. Yeah, I'm surprised how much I like this blush brush. Usually I like a more precise brush, but 
I just feel like this one is really nice because it makes me look even more youthful because I'm getting it in a more generous area. So I've been liking this so far. Now I like everything to look really seamless on the skin. And again, I want to add a little bit of a glow back to my skin without it emphasizing texture because we're going for that smooth look. So I just like to pick up a bit of this Chantecaille Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder that I used as my highlighter. Again, I pick it up on that brush. This is a Sonia G Face One. I believe it's called the Buffing Brush. I'll leave a link down below. But I like to take that excess off. And then really, I want to emphasize this with a super light touch. This is the only product I am buffing into the skin. And I do want to say that this brush is so important because I would never buff into my skin with any other brush. Because like I said, when you buff into the skin, it can actually disrupt product underneath and it can lift up dry texture or it can lift up dry skin or it can start to emphasize texture on the skin. But this brush is so soft that it never uh, disrupts product underneath when you are buffing in as a final touch. So this brush is really key. And again, this powder is kind of key too because it adds that glow, but it adds that smoothing effect to that skin, to the skin as well. So I like to buff everything into the skin. And I think this is an important step because it ensures that all the products, they kind of start melding together so that there's no harsh line between where you've applied a brush, a blush, a bronzer, and a highlighter. Sometimes you can just see those harsh lines, but this makes sure that everything is infused together. So everything is diffused so you can't detect any harsh lines, which again is going to actually give it a more natural appearance, especially in person because you're not going to see that distinct line between all the products. And this Chantecaille powder just adds that glow back, which adds that more skin-like effect, and it blurs the skin as well. And then as a final touch, always setting very specific areas with a powder. If you're oily, you might wanna go in um, with a more generous amount of powder. But for me, since I am dry, I only apply powder to a very specific area. Again, if you're going for that super blurred look, I tend to use the Beauty Blender, this is the little puff, for like more special occasions if I'm going out for dinner, then I'll really press that into the skin just right here. But because I'm, I don't know, I just want a light amount of powder, I'm gonna go in with this Sonia G, this is the Master Face Brush, and this is the Clay de Peau Refining Press Powder. If you want blurred skin, you must get this Clay de Peau Refining Press Powder. This is the most smoothing blurred powder I also like the Chantecaille one. Like I mentioned, the Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. That one will just add a little bit of coverage to the skin though. So I like to just pick up a little bit of that product, get that excess off, and I literally only apply it right where I have pores, which is just in the center of my face. Again, if you're oily, you might want to apply it to your chin, your nose, and your forehead. But since I have dry skin, I like to just apply it just to my pores there. And again, you could see I was pressing that product into the skin. And now my skin looks completely flawless and blurred and perfected, but it still has that natural appearance because I haven't, I've just added thin layers of product to the skin without overwhelming it. So in person, you will still see my skin texture. It won't look like I've applied a lot of heavy makeup or anything like that. It still looks natural in person. So the skin is complete, but I'm just gonna go and finish off the look here, just on camera, just so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0 in the shade Muted Pink. I'm just gonna line my lips. I actually quite like this lip pencil, it's really nice. And then I'm gonna take this NARS Afterglow Lip Balm in the shade Fast Lane. So this is basically a tinted lip balm. And just applying it on the lips. I really like this as well. It's super comfortable and hydrating. Reminds me of the Chanel Rouge Coco Flashes. But I kind of like this one more, I feel like. <laughs> For the eyes, I actually picked up this new product from Moira Cosmetics. It's the Lucent Cream Shadow in the shade 28 Orion. I, I tried out another luxury cream eyeshadow and it was such a fail. I've just heard good things about this. This was relatively inexpensive. I'm trying to branch out a little bit so I don't have like just purely luxury eyeshadows because I feel like with eyeshadows, that's the one thing you don't necessarily have to splurge on. So anyways, I'm just going to apply this with my fingertips did I say the shade? It's the shade Orion. If you were looking at the Charlotte Tilbury um, Hypnotizing Pop Shots in the shade Rose Gold specifically, I feel like this is a great dupe for that Charlotte Tilbury shade. But this one kind of melds into the skin even more, so you don't get as much of a metallic effect from this shadow. 
um, than you would with the Charlotte Tilbury. The Charlotte Tilbury is a little more intense. This is absolutely stunning though. It's really that creamy formula that just gives you that wet, glossy eyed look. But it does have a little bit of that sporadic shimmer, but it's very, very natural looking. I'm also going to take that Valentino bronzer on a little bit of a pencil brush, and I'm going to apply that to the lower lash line, just to add a little bit of definition there. For my mascara, I just went in with the Chanel Le Base. This is a lash primer, and then went on with the Gucci Le Obscure Mascara, and I used the Hourglass waterproof gel eyeliner in the shade cave which is a brown eyeliner and i use that to tight line so i applied that in my upper waterline and that is the final look i hope you guys enjoyed this ultimate guide to blurred and smooth skin and using my favorite products to achieve that look as well please let me know your favorite blurring and smoothing products down below because again i would love to try those out i love to hear from you and keep that discussion going don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already like this video if you like it and i'll see you in my next video